Hello everybody, I'm very pleased finally to actually get this onto a, uh, uh, one of my YouTube videos. Uh, Suffolk Hobbit here, and today we have got Gandalf the Grey on cart. I thoroughly enjoyed painting this model, and I, uh, well, just what can I, it's just an awesome model. Really, really pleased with him. When I first uh, made him and painted him all up, I uh, put a video, a picture on one of the Facebook uh, Lord of the Rings pages and I got quite a few likes and quite a few comments which is awesome really enjoyed that so thanks to everyone who might possibly watch this who's also part of that Facebook thing I do appreciate it greatly um, but yeah here he is in all his glory um, so from my point of view in regards to actually building him in the first place uh, a lot of people said they had a lot of issues with it that they really struggled that wasn't a very good kit to work with and um, I fortunately haven't got that issue. It, it went well. It was fine. There's there nothing wrong with any of the casting. Uh, all the pieces were fine. It was it was a brilliant model. Um, <laughs> I've had a few issues with fine cast and other things in the past, like I've said many times before. But this model was just perfect. He came out fine, really good, really pleased with him. So in that regards, you know, I can't knock it. Um. He was all undercoated black as usual. That's my go-to colour when it comes to this sort of thing. And the the cart was the first. Well, I paint. I had him in three pieces. So I had the cart as one piece. Gandalf obviously is a separate piece. The horse. Oh, and Telelight and the fireworks as well. So there's four four pieces that I had. Painted Gandalf first in the same colours that I'm sure we all paint him in. For me, it's just Abaddon black with Mechanica standard grey added to very slightly over time. Uh, the hat is a mixture of Cantor Blue, uh, simply mixed with Aberdeen Black and then highlighted with Ceramite White, as usual, with a bit of a shabby bone as well, um, to get a nice strong blue vibe. Um, simple as that. Many, many, many layers were used. If anything, to be honest, the first layers, which was the dark blue, was probably a wasted effort, but it, it added to the colour, I'd imagine, in some way, shape or form. Um, <clears throat> and also, I spent a lot of time looking at the images of Gandalf on his car, and I spent loads of time watching the intro to the Fellowship of the Ring over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and I noticed he wears a darker cloak, or uh, what do you want to call it? Cape, whatever you want to call it. So he's got the greys of his usual, you know, attire. But then over his knees and over his shoulders, you look in the pictures, you'll see that he's almost, it's still a grey, but there's a brown to it. And so I thought I would try and encompass that as well, add to, you know, add a bit more realism to the model. And just also a little bit something different. So if people really look, they'll be like, ah, look, he's added the browns. Yeah, because Gandalf's got the brown cape, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I went for. So this cape is dryad uh, bark with a little bit of Mechanica stand grey added into it. Um, and there's a simply slowly but surely built up with more of the brown as the highlight than the grey. The grey was just there as an initial colour just to help blend it in slightly with the rest of the greys of the model. And as you can see, hopefully you can see it does make a noticeable difference and it gives them a bit more of something just to look at. Uh, the belt is a simple Mournfang brown with a very slight highlight, if that to be quite honest, because it's so hidden, um, you know, it, it's kind of going to be wasted if you spend too much time on it. And the horse, again, I've spent hours, well, say hours, a couple of hours at least, <laughs> pouring over images of his horse. And again, it's Scrag Brown, uh, Mournfang Brown mixed in as well. Um, what else? Oh, no, no, Telelight, no, not Scrag Brown, it's Doom Ball Brown, sorry, I used that. I've got XV88 on the uh, part where the, where the wagon is sort of loaded onto the horse's shoulders. I'm not entirely sure what the technical word for that is called, but do let me know in the comments below. And you'll notice that the horse has got black legs, he's got one rear white leg, and obviously the white patch on the front of the horse's head. I want to make sure they captured all the details as best I could of him. Inside, with the fireworks here, just, I went crazy to be quite honest, I just used loads of different colours just to highlight that. So you've got yellows, we've got shafty bone shades, we've got some reds, a couple of oranges as well, look, and some browns as usual. And that was just for the Gandalf's car, for obviously his fireworks, because there's so many various colours. I did contemplate green stuff in, and sculpt in a tiny little dragon firework from the famous scene where Merry and Pippin launch the firework, which turns out to be the dragon, you know, all over Bilbo's party. Um, I kind of thought it'd be cool to add that in. Um, but 
my skills aren't that good for such a tiny little piece of green stuff. So I could still add it in time. Who knows? It's, you know, you can never stop adding to a model. Um, so I might add it in time, but at this point in time, I've left it. But you never know. For the cars itself, I went through kind of a weird phase, actually. You see, I painted this twice, with the intention of doing that. So, if I walk, walk with me on this one. So, we started off, you, you, for all these videos, you'll notice I use very limited colours. And that's because I like to try and use as much as I can of each colour. Rather than using washes, lots of different browns as highlights, lots of different washes to bring highlights and shadows, use just one good colour with a complementary lighter shade or darker shade of of the chosen colours, so orange, a lighter orange or darker red, a lighter red, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what I did to begin with, for this reason, I used Mournfang Brown with black first for the for the base colour, for the, you know, the base coat, then added white to it. So in the end, the brown went really off brown because I'm just simply adding white and it gave it a weird sort of almost creamy colour. That is what I was after because I then went back and with XV88 colour, mixed in with, again, black as usual, I then went over it all again, slightly watered down as well, so it's almost a slight wash. With that, I then simply dry brushed XV88 all over, and then some uh, Ballor Brown, I think, and that, again, another light colour. And what that did is where the Mournfang Brown was obviously so dark initially, that's still all in the recesses. And the highlighted dry brushed Mournfang Brown, which is going more and more off brown colour, more of this weird creamy white colour, that stayed in the highlights areas. So when I then exviated it with the black watered down, that sunk all into the grooves again, brought out more of the dark. So when I then repainted it again, dry brushed with XV88 and then Battle Brown, all the highlights were that bit brighter, or so I feel. And I think it's come out really well. I think it was worth the effort because, he says you can't really tell, can your light's a bit iffy today? Because it's given it this lovely wickery texture. It's given it a bit of a, it's not a smooth finish, and that is what I was after. You can see the paint's actually, it's almost sort of built up, I suppose. It's not like an even finish, is it? If you look, you can see it's quite hubbly bubbly, these little dots of like hard paint that's sort of built up. That's intentional, that's what I wanted. I wanted to give the wicker such a lovely bit of character. And I hope, hopefully you guys would agree that it's uh, come out really well. But that's what I went for and that's my plan. So again, there could be a lot of time wasted, maybe, I don't know. You know, professional painters out there do tell me, but I feel doing it in the two different brains to create this finished um, piece, it was worth it because it did add so much to it. If nothing else, then it purely gave me some great practice for dry brushing. Um, and then, well, simply a little bit of lead belcher for the wheels. And for the base, I, I had a lot of thought about the base. You see, I was thinking of doing the bridge thing. A lot of people get put Gandalf on a little bridge, which is fantastic. And again, that's what I wanted to do. Um, there's some others where he's going past fields and walls and God knows what else. And all lovely. And I suddenly thought, but so many people do that. I kind of thought that's kind of almost like the done thing. Not that I'm knocking it because I was going to do it myself. But I just suddenly thought, well, actually, how about... A simple, just him just walk for a nice, simple, pretty walkway, pathway, roadway, whatever, surrounded by loads of flowers. So that's what I went for. So in the end, I stuck a load of wall filler, just standard, you know, what's it called? I'm trying to think of the brand. But just standard wall filler you'd use to, to, to fill up the holes where you've taken your shelves down and stuff, you know. A poly filler, whatever it's called. So splodged a load of that on. Um... Stuck it all down, so it's nice and smooth to the base. I had a raised area this side, a raised area this side, smoothed down the bit in the middle. So you got that, that nice sort of valley curve, slight curve, where the road's getting used so much as wearing it down. Let it dry, and then I then just went crazy with static grass, um, some of the stones from my model railway kit. Well, say kit, just, you know, scenery bits. And loads of flowers, and I put a few little tiny bits of the flower tufts in the grass as well, and that, and just went really to town with it. And on the back, when the filler was drying, I very quickly used one of my files just to score out two lines on the back to make it look like that the car is actually sort of digging into this muddy roadway. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it came out really well. I'm really pleased. Hope you guys approve as well. Hope you agree with me. Again, the highlights were simply, uh, you've guessed it, Mournfang Brown to begin with, XV88, Ballor Brown, and then funnily enough, a very, very light dusting of um, a shabdy bone was dry brushed over the top. 
And that's the finished article. That is Gandalf the Grey on his uh, cart. I bought this kit originally as this was the kit purely as it is. Since since then, they've re-released him as uh, three different types of Gandalf all in one set for about £40, I think. Which I will be investing in purely so I can get the mounted Gandalf. I'll sell the cart and the other one off. Probably cheap, to be honest, um, at some point. I might keep them, maybe. Who knows? But I'll definitely get it just so I can get the mounted Gandalf on horse. But uh, but yeah, there he is. Been meaning to share this Gandalf with you for quite some time. It's just one of those things, as usual. Life gets in the way and whatnot. Um, but yeah, there he is. I'm really pleased with him. Great miniature, great model. Um, recommend anyone buying him, uh, just because he's so cool. And in gaming terms, he's got some cool uh, cool effects, actually. I think they work quite well for, uh, for old Gandalf. So yeah, give it a try, definitely. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. Any questions or comments, please always say. I'd you know, love to hear from you all. It's really nice when I get little nice feedback and bits and bobs. Um, and, uh, yeah, take it easy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.